All right, guys, we're doing a little live stream yeah. fishing talk here. I'm here with uh, Captain Kenny Schmidt from the, uh, the Angler Fleet, yeah. right? Angler Fleet, yep. Okay, and I'm here with um, Captain King, King, King Khan. Khan. King Khan. I see some of his videos. He actually does some pretty cool stuff. Uh, well, so first we'll start, you know, tell us about yourself first, what do you actually do, and, you know, what you, you know, what type of fishing you like to do and all that stuff. Sure. So what I do is I go ahead and uh, attend all the fishing events and record them and the fishing boats. I go in there as well and capture the moment. A lot of fishermen, what they do is they catch, but they don't have that picture of that moment. You're setting that rod and it really in that fish from the water all the way to the boat. You see that swing. And that's what my video is trying to capture is that moment because me as a fisherman, I do have a GoPro. I only can catch what I can see in front, but never like a third person, like the boat is really over there, like looking at you, but it's really not. It's that 360 camera, and it does that unique uh, it, you know, angle and video that is really changing how we're going to take pictures and showing people how fun it is to you know catch that fish and bring it up. That's pretty awesome. Now, what inspired you to actually get started in this stuff? When did you start doing this, recording these kind of fishing trips and stuff with people? So it took me, well, th this is my first year. Actually, last year was my hardcore year because I was just kind of trying to figure out what should I do with the video, uh, with the cameras, and what inspired it is just the uh, concept and idea of how do you share that excitement of you catching that fish and um, putting it all together and kind of make it really epic and trying to get also younger generation. That's my goal. Sure. Is to get the get the young. We have us right. We all are already into fishing. And we're in a different generation than the young one. The young one's always in technology and all that. I'm trying to change that. If they can see something a little different, they might inspire them to go ahead and try it out. That's a great outlook yeah. on that. Thank you. Uh, Kenny, tell us about your story a little bit. What got you involved? You know, I know you're with the Angler Fleet now. With the Angler uh, Fleet I think you were tying bucktails for a while. I was wild, doing, right? yeah, making bucktails and uh, tackle, which turned into selling the stuff for people to make their own tackle. Um, I was doing charters for a number of years. Opportunity came up to pick up some party boats and, and do it bigger and full time, which I had to, you know, it was like a calling. So sure. when the opportunity came, yeah. So I'm still doing the small boat stuff. Uh, you know, we have a a four-man boat, a six-man boat, and then we have, you know, a bigger boat that takes, you know, 12 to 15 people fishing, um, and then a full-size party boat that takes up to, like, 60. Okay, and you guys are all out of, like, the Port Washington area? All out of Port area. Washington, yeah, all out of Port Washington. Um, we have a kids' summer program as well Okay. that we take kids all summer, you know? Yep, we, yep. we do a lot of trips where there's a lot of families and stuff, and, you know, Con, what you were saying, like, as a fisherman, I'll fish alone at night, or I'll fish on a boat with 60 people. Capturing the moment is the hardest part. You know, you can have the best time ever, and then you try to recap on it, and it's, it's more memory than anything, so but that's really cool. But, right, right. Yeah, yeah. That's so. awesome. Now, you mentioned your bucktails, and you used to make bucktails. Yep. Uh, I know a lot of people like to tie, but catching on your own stuff that you actually made is a really rewarding feeling. Oh, it's, sure it's, you could it's, attest it's to that. Best, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, it gets a little crazy because you have all these colors, and then you sit there, and you're trying to make something, and possibilities are endless. So it gets a little right. wild, but yeah, no, and it, it, it's tough now. You know, fishing so much and taking people so much, it's, I have trouble even finding time to sit down and, and, and make the tackle. It's yeah. like I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to cave and buy others, but it's come to that point I kind of have to and, and focus on the fishing. Well, there's always so much you could do. Yeah, you know, and exactly. you got to put your time toward the things that are you know, exactly that yeah. are most beneficial. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna have a, a fishing talk here today. General fishing talk. It's gonna be an open forum. We're gonna talk about whatever related to fishing. But I want to start off with. Um, uh, what's your favorite species to actually target? You know, we're gonna start with Khan over here. If you had to pick one species of fish to target, what would it be for you, and why? So, with my years of fishing, starting off, got me addicted with bluefish, little snappers, and then became the big blue, and then all of a sudden, porgy sea bass. But the best one I ever experienced is going to Cabo, it's not Long Island, and Cabo started me catching the big fish like tuners, mahi mahi, wahoo. That was my first addiction. I'm like, wait a second, I've been catching any smaller one. I want that fighting power now. It changed everything. When I came to Long Island, I found out they have tuna trips, and boy, that was fun. Yeah. And tuna fishing, I think that's addicting to me. The long fight, making sure you don't lose that line, get it close enough, I see so many people, they're right there, and boom, it's gone. That's because yeah. they kept horsing it. You're not supposed to. It's and always at the end. That's yes, exactly. That fish. Yes. Yeah, you have to know how to. A lot of people know how to, you know, hook into the fish and fight the fish, but 
if you don't know how to finish, seal the deal, yeah. Yeah. that's when they're going to beat you, right? Hey, exactly. Oh, most of the times. <laughs> you know, but you did say bullfish, and that's a great point because yeah. I try, I, I am familiar with like bullfish being a great introductory species for the younger generation. Yeah, We've so all yeah. started with snappers. Right. You know, whether it was snappers or flounder back in the day, we're going to get to that in a little bit, flounder yeah. fishing. Yeah. Um, but the bluefish, the snappers, is how you start the kids. And I, you know, because they're numerous, and then, of course, as they grow and grow, you know, it's, it could be a lot of fun to catch when they get into that big 10, 12, 15 pound size. Oh, yeah. you know, but I agree with that. Captain yeah. uh, Ken, what, do you, what would you say your favorite fish to target is? It's a hard question because there's a reason I love everything. However, you know, growing up fishing for bluegills, to, you know, got into some tuna last summer. Uh, it's all great. I, I love black fish. Black fish is something that just you know, all season long, I can't wait for blackfish season. You know, you could be in the best striper bite, and I, I love stripers, plugging for them and, you know, using artificials. Um, but blackfish always has me just, you know, it, it could be in the middle of a great season, and I can't wait for blackfish season. Yeah. You know, so there's something about that fish that it, it's it's fun, especially a light tackle jigging where we are. You know, we have a lot of rocks, and uh, it's, it's a little bit different. You're fishing, you can fish really shallow, you know, with, with blackfish jigs, and it's just it's a different thing. So it's really interesting that you say that because for years I just predominantly did stripe bass. Yeah. That was my thing. I was like, yeah. oh, I want stripers, yeah. Yeah. day, oh, night. Who doesn't? I'm yeah. gonna live breed stripers. Yeah. Exactly. And then you know, as I of course as I took the job at the magazine and started to dabble into other fisheries, you know, I learned I always loved fluke. That, that's always like a bread and butter kind of fishery yeah. for Long Island. Most people enjoy going fluke fishing. Yeah. But it's funny when you say black fish because when I started doing black fishing, yeah. When it came time for the fall run, it typically we gear up the strippers the fall run. That's historically how it goes sure. for most people. Sure. Yeah. I started doing just blackfish. Yeah. I was, you know, all my friends were going striper fishing. Yeah. They're saying, oh, we're going surf casting tonight, this, that, the other thing. Um, we're going chasing albies. I said, oh, all right, you know, I'm going blackfish. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it, it's they're like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, no, you don't, you got to go do it to understand the, yes. um, the actual bite, the feel, what goes into actually hooking these fish. You know, the skill to when you have to set the hook. Yes. You know, and, and everything that goes into it. And after I started doing it and I got addicted, I got my, some of my friends into it, I'm like, try it. Just try it. And once they tried it, they're like, no, I 100% know what you're saying. Oh, the yeah. black yeah. They were hooked on it. They're like, no, 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 I'm not going chasing striped bass sports anymore. Yeah. I'm going to walk the, uh, the jetties. I'm going to walk yes. the boulder fields. That's what the nighttime is for black fish. You go for the bass. Yeah. yeah, well, you know, <laughs> daytime fishing, we call it like gentleman's fishing. Yeah, fishing. Sure. So I am going sure. gentleman's fishing today, guys. Sure. You know, so we had a lot of fun with that. Um, now, you fish all over the island, south shore, north shore mainly. What, what's your, like, uh, go-to area to, to fish? So, when I first started, like you said, the jetty was yeah. like, because I didn't have a boat or didn't, you know, really. So you were a surf rat to start. I was a surf, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. yes. And I, like you said, blackfish was an addicting thing. How far is blackfish off the jetty? Oh, have you very close. You've done that, right? Yes, yes. When they go in the rock, I tell yes. guys that go surf, I'm sorry to cut you off, but no. surf black fishing compared to no black fishing right. yeah. are two different animals. Uh, because you have to kind right. of fight them differently. It is, yes. Except up and down, it's you up and down and back and forth as well. Correct. And it makes the, gives the fish more of an advantage. Yeah. But as you were saying, yeah. the jetty. Yeah, the jetty, I mean, the challenge is always losing your rig, but once you know the structure really well, because you go that same spot, yeah, yeah. you know where the cast and you know where the rocks are, you always get as close to the rock and leave it there and wait. Right. And that's when they come in and attack it. And a lot of people I see is like they get jammed with the fish, they try to get out of it as fast as possible. No, let the fish run its way out. They'll run out of the hole eventually, and then, you know, it's got to be a little patient with those. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's what it is. Now, Captain Kenny, you, you, I know you're in the North Shore now. Were you ever anywhere else? Did you were you no, always it, predominantly a North Shore fisherman? You know, it, it, I, I guess it's kind of a, a good thing. I was born and raised there. I've always fished the North Shore. I've, of course, I fished everywhere. I, I, I hit Montauk, of course, course. a lot. Yeah. I, you know, I, I get around. You know, yeah. I've done blackfish trips north and south. Um, but I, you know, I'm fishing my home waters really, which is cool because I grew up there. I, I mean, watched, you know, like the back of your hand at this point. Yeah, I've yeah. watched it change over the years. You know, I kind of dream about the old timer stories when it was once a certain way and whatnot. But it's 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 it, it comes and goes, it fluctuates. Yeah. But it, it's my home waters. I know it well, and it's kind of nice when you're fishing in a place you're comfortable with, where you know you right. have, we have a lot of rocks to know about and stuff too. Now you mentioned the word change, and we all know that things change throughout the years fishing cycles, patterns, you know, fisheries, yes. we'll get into a couple of those things in a bit. In your area, you know, you say change, you know, what has gotten better, 
what do you yeah. think has dropped off a little bit in that? But I know things have gotten a little better for yeah. some fishing, oh, yeah. you know, which is great yeah. to see. You know, so what would you? What's your take well, on that? Like I said, you, you know, you hear the stories from the old timers, the back in the day stuff, right? And um, you know, I know that the striker fishing used to be absolutely incredible. I know there was a moratorium where we weren't even able to fish for them, where it was just they really weren't around as much. Um, and I'm not going to say it was from the slot, but around you know two three years ago when they made the slot, uh, the strikers came back like, yeah. a lot. And again, I, I can't solely blame that. I'm sure it had an effect, but you know it, it just happened to line up with that year where there was a slot. You know we were able to hit good sized strikers all summer long. It's like they never left; they were just here. Right. Um, and I feel like the striker fishing has come back very good. I mean, we're getting, on, on your neck in the woods. Yeah, right? in the yeah. Western Sound. Yeah, I mean, yeah. We are. We're in the Western Sound. It's a really unique piece of water. You know, it's it's not the same as Orion Montauk South Shore. It, it's it has its its differences. Um, but the strikers have really come back. I mean, and you're not the first person to tell me that either. Yeah. In that area, in that area it's, I've heard it's, in a, in a it's been way. very good. You, know? yeah, you can yeah. jig stripers there all season long, all summer long. Oh, yeah. All you know, long. Been, and, and bluefish too moved them pretty good that last Yeah, year. we used to call it like the summer doldrum where it's like kind of, you know, the water's warm and it's not really, you know, as worth the effort to try in the middle of the summer. But, you know, a, a lot of, you know, I do everything from the party boat stuff with a lot of people. Uh, to, you know, fly in light tackle charters on smaller boats. And, you know, it, it's been so good over the summer that it's like, it doesn't matter if it's, you know, noon in August, there's still fish around to, to right. have a great day, which is right. awesome. Great you for know. business. Great for business. always offer some sort of fishing, yeah. you know, good fishing yeah. for somebody. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure, you know, and of course, if you have the stripers, the bluefish is always pretty decent. You guys yeah, which, have to, which also came back. It came back. I heard years the Western out. Sound run was unbelievable. It was awesome. Right. Awesome. It was awesome. They, they yeah. stacked up in the Western Sound. And those fish were big too, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. So that was good to hear. Yeah. And it was weird to have years without that, and you kind of missed it, wondering if it could come back. And yeah. then, well, here they are. You know, <laughs> where do they go? Where? It's like, you know, right, right. whatever caused it, but you know. Now I don't hear too much about, um, too much about fluke up your way, but I do know the porgies. Porgy is great. Porgy fishing is great. Porgies are great. Tog fishing is great, of course. Tog fishing is great. Oh. And again, unique because you're fishing, it's a different style. You know? Yes. It's, like, it's almost like, why would you not jig there? Where you go right, other right. places you can't jig. Right. So. Of course. Now, we mentioned fluke being one of like these uh, bread and butter fish of you know the Northeast. Everybody loves the fluke fish. Yeah. How is it, and, and I, maybe I may have spoke to you soon, but how is you guys fluke fishing? Up so, like? as far as the numbers, it's great. You get a lot of fish. Okay. It's more of a, a struggle to get keeper or larger fish. Yeah. I mean, they're in the mix. You know, you're fluking all day. I, I feel like the numbers are, you, you catch a lot. Right. But, you know, there's a lot of throwbacks. I feel like probably uh, more throwbacks than in other areas, but, you know, you'll, you'll find your keepers. Yeah. You have to work. You put your time in it. Yeah. It's with anything. Yeah. And, you know? you know, with a lot of the fish that I do, I like to hit the spots that not everybody hits. They're yeah. Kind of like a, you know, not a secret spot, but just right, somewhere right. that's not overfished or not where you have boats doing trips all day long, which yeah. those spots work too. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes you got to search around a little bit and find where, where you right, can, right. you know, find your own little honey hole. Now, how about you, Con? Have you, uh, your fluke fishing experience the past couple of years, um, you do a lot of South, you do some South Shore yes, fluking? Yes, mainly South Shore. What have you been seeing on the South Shore for fluke? So, I fish a lot with the charter, Salty Dogs, okay. and we uh, mainly have, like, you know, full packs. So Where's Salty Dog out of? He's out of the uh, East Rockaway. Okay, to yeah. the west. Yeah. Yes, to the west. And then, uh, he likes to fish the bay a lot for the fluke, and last year after the pit, we caught a lot of pieces in comparison okay. from the years that I've been with him. Right. Yeah, that was a big hit. Every day we got our limit, almost. Every time we bring somebody out. Yeah. So it was really productive last year. Nice. Um, yeah, yeah. Now I gotta, I gotta uh, throw in now, the keepers are getting with a uh, 18 and a half, 19s, or were they like some pretty, you know, we get nicer fish fishing mix? Because you know the, yes. the regulations are changing this year. All right. For the first half of the season, it's going to be 19 inches for fluke. Yeah. And it's going to go to that 19 and a half inch size uh, end of um, August to October 15th. All right. So do you think that you're still going to be able to catch those keeper sized fish? This season as well. Do you think those fish got that group of fish got bigger? You'll do all right still. What right. do you think about that? I think it's going to be a little mixed. Uh, the reason why is because our range been uh, the legal size all up to like 22. Yeah. And that's been in there. And a lot of time our fish is around 19 to 19 and a half anyway. Right. So therefore we kind of like I feel we're probably going to continue getting it as long as we hit those corrections. You're going to do all right still. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's now, what I, I have noticed that you know from doing reports on the Fisherman Magazine. The South Shore body fish seems to be a little bit bigger than North Shore body fish from what I'm seeing. But there are numbers on the North Shore, yeah, yeah. you know, which is good. And there are some keepers where you could find them. Right. Uh, but I, I do have to say that, you know, it is going to be a little bit tougher 
with that 19 and 19 and a half inch fish, of course, during the, the middle part of this, the, the doldrums. Yeah. yeah. You know, but you can still pick away at fish. You know, yeah. toward, toward the end of the season, <laughs> you start to get those bigger uh, fluke moving in. Yeah. You know, so that'd be a little bit nicer. But we do have that extended season as well, which is nice. Right. Yeah. Um, the one thing I am happy about with this new regulation, and, you know, I don't know if anybody's familiar with it or not, but this regulation that did go into effect, that's a 28% reduction from last year. Mm. But we gained season. Right. You know, we got an extra two weeks, almost two weeks in October. Yes. Which is good for, you know, the boats, people that still want to get out fluke fishing and stuff like that. They can still go. Right. You get that bigger fish into the year. Right. Considering we sacrificed, um, you know, a cup, you know, a little bit of size. Yeah. We got longer season. We only got one, you know, we got three fish now, which, you know, it's still okay. Yeah. At 28%, that's a big number. Mm. You know, to dice it up. 28% and we still walked away with a, a long season, longer season, mm -hmm. and not this huge 20, 21 inch fish, you know, I guess you could say they did the best they possibly could have with what they gave us, you know, so hope, you know, I'm glad we just got that smooth transition, because what I've noticed is, you know, a lot of people, you get that awkward gap that the fruit season ends on September 30th, mm -hmm. is that like 11 days until the tog season begins, and you're like, what do, what, you know, what do the boats do now, right. what do people kind of go for, you know, yeah. some sea bass or something like that. It makes it a lot easier, that, that transition. So I'm, I'm glad they got the season. There are going to be some bigger fish around, hopefully, at that time of year. It will make, you know, it will be possible to get your keepers, get potential limit for fluke then as well. Um, I'm going to ask you now, what is, I was just thinking in my head, what is one of your favorite moments you've captured on camera fishing? In your time doing this, you know, capturing this stuff on, on video, right. what would you say one of your favorite moments is? I think of I have to admit the the part that is uh, kind of like my favorite is when somebody lose a fish in a way. It's yeah. like you messed it up. Yeah. Like I don't know. I just kind of like the I'm <laughs> just joking. Yeah. No, no. But um, the the best thing is when a person um really really fight hard and yeah. that moment is like they couldn't do it like because they were fighting tuna and I felt oh, yeah. like wow that was a long fight and that guy couldn't do it yeah. and the greatest moment is people the, the mate stepped in helped him with the rod holding it so he can continue going and catch that you know fish yeah. and really at the end executing because the person listened to everything we're telling them right because some people just ignore what we tell them yeah. and directing the right way so you can definitely pull that fish in yeah, yeah. so that moment to me is like really exciting because they actually able to keep that fish. Right. Do you have a specific <laughs> moment that you could recall to in the past year or so that way you said, oh wow, like that told us I could I from a trip or something like that? Yeah, well, I mean I love tuna and that's what drove me crazy because it's chaotic. Yeah. And I love chaos because when a fish is running, you have three lines running at the same time. Now you gotta coordinate everybody, making sure they're not gonna crisscross. And right. that is what. So, like three, three hookups at the yeah, same time. Yeah, three hookups. Yeah, and they're running. And this yeah. one, I, I think the maximum I saw was eight. Wow. And it was just like every direction, what do you do with that? So, I got to <laughs> ask out of the eight, how many were landed? Only three. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I got three still. Yeah. You still got yeah. That's pretty exactly. good. Exactly. The other, they, they just snapped off in the middle of fighting. Yeah. One of them uh, finished all his line, all gone. He, that fish just kept going. Yellow fin, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah that's awesome. And there, there was a mixture in the blue fin in that moment, too, but nice. okay. that blue fin must have ripped them off because we knew it was not yellow. It was yeah. way bigger than that's that. That's wild, man. Yeah. yeah. You got eight fish hooked up. Exactly. Yeah, we still landed three. Exactly, yeah. That's yeah, chaos, yeah, we did. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. And, and I had to How many guys did you have in the boat? Uh, so we had like uh, three mates. Um, yeah. I'm considered almost a mate because even though I'm a camera guy, yeah. I have the experience in the background. Right. So therefore I can kind of guide somebody right. along the way and know what to do. Yeah, so I wasn't the one who couldn't help him keep the fish because it was gone. Yeah. That would help the other mate, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As I said, there's more rods hooked up than other people in the boat. Yeah. Right? Exactly. That's why. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly. a good problem. But oh yeah, I guess is. so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Until they take all your line and you gotta. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but it's, it must have been a, a lot of fun. Oh, it is loud. Yeah. I like, like I said, I like chaos. And chaos yeah. is fun because that's what gets fish excited. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's oh, get yeah. boring. You know, doesn't have any chaos into it. Uh, Kenny, so top moment from the past season. What would you say your one of your top moments was? I know you did the summer camp and stuff that had these yeah. great memories you know, on that too. Can I get two? Yeah, <laughs> two. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. No, you know, two. And the first one will be like a multitude of occasions where, you know, the summer camp is one, kids get so into it, you know, you get a lot of families on the boat, some of these people, 
they don't fish. You know, the amount of kids that I had, this is their first fish. Like, that's a moment. You know, you're watching a kid catch the first fish of his life. You know, I, I can't say I remember my very first fish, but I remember the kid's first fish. And, you know, it's like, it's just such a, it's such a great moment to see that excitement, to just know, like, this kid's leaving with a, a great memory of this. Like, this is something he's going to want to come back to, you know? Right. Um, and, you know, I haven't done a lot of tuna fishing in the past. My brother, who, my bigger fishing partner, moved out west. He came back this summer. We got on some yellowfin, some nice, like, 70 pound yellowfin this okay, summer. And that nice. was just, like, an epic trip. And it was, you know, I wasn't working that trip. I wasn't taking people. I had a, a, a seasoned uh, tuna fisherman who's a friend of mine. And he took us out, and we, we, we did well. And it was just, uh, you know, that was just a cool experience to get to fish with my brother again and whatever. But yeah. that was just, like, a personal trip that stands out. But in general, just the amount of kids and families showing them like such a good time, getting them totally hooked, no pun intended, yeah, just to, sure. just just that first fish moment or that just great time fishing, you know, a memorable right. experience. For and them. that's yeah. awesome because it's programs that you guys do with the Angler Fleet that yeah. creates uh, future generations yeah. of fishermen. Oh yeah. You know, because otherwise they may never, you know, never yeah. got introduced into the sport of it. Yeah. And it may never happen for them. But uh, you guys do a great thing with that. Oh, and you, you know, know, these kids, they, they come out, they love it. They, you know, I've had parents tell me, um, you know, they did a week of fishing camp, but the problem is now he doesn't want to do football camp or he doesn't want to do, he doesn't want to do this camp. And it's like, that's it. I'm, well, listen, not I'm not complaining. You know, I'm sure yeah, you guys complain about that. You know, you know I mean, you know, fit, football, yeah, it's great, but yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. fishing is something you can do for the rest of your life. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah, football, yeah, yeah, you can do that in your youth. I like hearing that that's right. what I do though. still, but the favorite, yes, yeah, I can agree with that. They can be fishing for future generations for the rest of their life. You created an angler for life. Yes. A lot of angles for And some of them might and be my mates awesome. in the future, you know. They, they may just hope that this is their life, they love it, and, they, yeah. you know. That's so. awesome stuff. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and we talk about, like, uh, you know, the kids getting the fish and stuff like that. We talked about the snappers before, yeah. being a great introductory species yeah. for the kids and stuff like that. But I want to talk about an introductory species that kind of tailed off in the past, I would say, 15, 20 years, which is the flounder. Mm. You know, we were talking before me and Kenny about um, doing the flounder, you know, flounder fishing. He was trying, and I don't know if you tried flounder fishing any time in recent years. I've never caught a flounder in my life, oh, so no. whatever that, you know, whatever that means. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I, I did know. catch them, but it was during the wrong season. Right. Right. And it was yeah. on the wreck. So I, I heard, heard there's a pretty yes. decent ocean flounder fish. Right? Yes. They you know, were they, pretty good size. They get them as little bycatch. They yes. Good size. Yeah. It's actually interesting because a gentleman called me. He was uh, fishing a, um, a wreck for sea bass in the fall, yes. and he called me saying he caught a, a world record flounder wow. over wow. nine pounds. And I, I, you know, I, said, wow. I said, well, you can't keep the fish. Right. It's out of season. Yes. It won't count as a record. Exactly. But send me pictures of it. I'd love yeah. to see yeah. it after you let it go. I never got the pictures, so I don't know what, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know what happened with that. But, wow. you know, you, you do have to think that can this species that was, you know, so depleted, in, you know, maybe for reasons of overfishing, um, predation, you know, seals, striped bass, yeah. maybe even environmental factors like the way the waters are in our, you know, in the bays, they can't spawn the way they want to spawn, you know, productively. Sure. You know, do we, does this species have a chance, are they ever going to come back, you know? I mean, I want to, I want to do a trip for them this year. Me and Doc Muller, we have spoken about going fishing for them in the yeah. so we're going to try and catch like, uh, one or two of them, just to say we caught them this year, yes, you know, kind yes, of thing. Yeah. But, do, I mean, I mean, it's, it's a shame that the species hasn't come back yet. Do you guys think that, you know, is there a shot still for these fish? I, I think there's there's always a shot. I, you know, part of the reason people don't really go for them anymore. You know, this is what I was saying before about, you know, you know the old timer stories back in the day when it was spectacular. And, you know, I think that people don't even think to go for them anymore. That's why I want to go out and see how the fishery is. You know, people ask me about it. If we get on them, if there's a fishery for them, let's go, you know? But, um, Will they come back? It's a good question. You know, I've heard a lot of things back from, you know, it was like power plants sucking up the eggs. Environmental, obviously, is always a concern. Um, and like you said, the predators. I think that once the population gets down, the predators take a big, you know, right. chunk of them. You yeah, know, I mean, predation is always a problem, yeah, but once the population is the below a certain level, yeah. it's going to affect it even more. Yes, so that, yes, you know yes. I, I do think yeah. it could come back. I mean, you know, when the stripers during the moratorium look, they came back then. Nobody's really fishing for them right now, so I don't think it's, it's not. It's no longer an overfishing thing. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. And and they are here. It's not like they're gone. So right. it's, it's a matter of, you know, I, I think if guys try for them, I I don't have a lot of experience with them, but I feel like it could be, 
you know, more at the end of the season thing. If people are going for them, I would love to see how, how it goes. You know, there's been enough time where they haven't been targeted heavily that hopefully they came back. Right. No, I know personally, last fall I was seeing some juveniles in Mauritius Bay, mm -hmm. yeah. which is good to see. Yes. You know, I mean, whether they make it to a full size, I, I don't know what goes on between that time. Yeah. They're yeah. getting to that size. But I was seeing some small ones in Mauritius. Uh, I know Jamaica Bay got some, they, they always have a decent um, run every year, like the Pumpkin Patch and all those spots up that way. Okay. Um, Tobacco Lot Bay up, up yeah. in, the, uh, in the east. I heard Montauk Harbor had some too, you know, I don't know I don't know for sure. But again, it comes back to also, I don't think anybody's trying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think anybody's going out there, you know, yeah. putting the chump pot down, yep. crushing the bank yep. muscles, mm -hmm. getting the sandworms down, you know. I don't know how many people are actually trying to do that. Right. You know, to even say that exactly. there are no, are, you know, no flounder. I thought that there was a couple boats running um, the richest. They were doing some flounder trips a few years back. And they would get some toward the tail end of the flounder season. Right. Yes. Um, but as far as, like, anybody really going out there trying, you know, I don't, I don't think that's happening. And I, I'm going to give it a shot this year. Yeah. Yeah. And I know you're going to give it a shot. I, I, I'm, I'm more hopeful towards the end of the season. I feel like it'll be better timing for it. And I, I think I have heard where at the end of the season is where it, it gets a little better. So, yeah. you know, I wasn't too disappointed in the lack of them early in the season. Look, we got them at bycatch, you know, and, and where I am in the Western Sound, it's loaded with bays and things like that. There's several bays, you know, Hass Bay, Little Neck Bay, Hempstead Harbor mm -hmm. are great homes for them. So, right. You know, right, right. I, I, you know, and some other spots too. I feel optimistic that we'll get on them. I'm hoping it's, I'm I hoping hope it's better do. than we expect. I hope you do, and you send me a nice picture I can put oh, in the magazine. Yeah, 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 you might have to come out with this too. I would love to. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. You know, but yeah, for sure. And speaking of other species, you know, there's been a lot of hot um, debate around striped bass too. Mm. You know, with um, regulations and this yeah. and that and the other thing. And you know, for those who aren't aware, the striped bass regulations for the season are going to stay what they became. Um, I believe it was in uh, June or July of last year. They does an emergency yes. sort of change, 20 to 31 inches of one fish. Yeah, they were trying. They're going back and forth. They were trying to open up a little bit more for the. Um, uh, for higher industry, the party and charter boats, we're trying to extend that slot a little bit. Right. Did it go through? It's going to remain 28 to 31 inches. Okay. Very tight slot. Working it is. Slot here. Yeah. But you know, from what you said, you said that slot has been helping. You know, I, I, I'm I feel like something does. to do with it. it you, you know, know it, it seems like there's been some some better fishing going on. You've yeah, been yeah. seeing. I think this, some of the surf guys have been seeing some better fishing. One thing I'll say is we we uh, so many trips I had like again light tackle fly trips, things like that, but, you know, even when I take a family and we use bait, whatever, there's been so many trips where every fish is overslept, and to me, yes. that's, well, it's a great day, you know, yes. yeah. and, and I've had people say, like, well, we really want to keep one, well, you know, right. I mean, you know, there's the sport of it, and there's the, the food there part of it, but, you know, the amount of trips where every fish is overslept, you can't get one in or even under, and it's like, yeah, to me, that's awesome, you know, big fish all day, that's, that's a good thing. Hey, if, you're, if you like fishing in general, yeah. you know, catching and yeah. releasing big fish, exactly. it's, yeah. it's a lot of fun. Yes. yes. You know, and there are people who you know do like to keep that fish once in a while. Sure. Right. You know, a big thing was like um, uh, a lot of people. You know, a lot of people go to Montauk. You know, a lot of people like Montauk, but they like to come home with something. Right. You know, going to Montauk, and especially these days, we talk about like changes and stuff like that. Yes. You know, the dynamics of the way we live are changing. Yeah. Look at how it is to go. Look at Montauk now. You know, look, a tackle shop closed out in Montauk recently, yeah. Yeah, and it was probably due to the changing dynamics of, you know, the the culture and the economy out there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it takes a while to get out there now. Right. You know, the, the traffic, the set of other thing, um, staying out there. Yes. You can't stay in Montauk. It's essentially an arm of the Hamptons now. You know, you have to, you know, just to get out there is thousands of dollars on yeah. top of a trip that you know you're going to pay a captain over a thousand dollars for a yeah. full day trip yeah you know and at the end of that day i could see the frustration in certain people when they can't bring a fish home right yeah. you know, i i could understand yeah. you know i, I mean i'm you know, i'm a sportsman i do like to yeah. catch sure. and release fish regardless yeah. but i could understand you know the frustration in certain people where they you know they spend all this money and they cannot keep you know a fish to go but you know that's what we live in and you know hopefully in years from now you know the striped bass fishing as it it is getting better, yeah. you know. Yeah, I guess because it is slot, yeah. um, continues to get better. You know, we see yeah. some more, maybe some more linear regulations in the future when the fishery, I guess, is in a yeah. uh, better position according to the fisheries managers. You know, but we'll see what happens with that. With that. It doesn't happen overnight. It does not happen overnight. It's a slow process. It's getting better. It's, 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 getting better. it certainly is a slow you process. Know, you, you get people; they mark so many fish, catch so many fish. As far as the right. shoppers go, they're like. 
where's the problem? But I think you got to look at the big picture, and yes. that's where it's hard when you're when you're in them and they're they're everywhere. It's one thing, but the big picture is different. Correct. With, with Correct. Their and to help. again, another spot that was really good last year was um, up in. Um, the western part on the south shore mm -hmm. that end of the year one last year i mean yeah. you, you yeah. guys heard about that yeah. did, you, yes. did you get in on that uh yes i was making the big uh, so, yeah so you guys sold. Just slaughtering it yeah just on diamond jake all big it. fish too yeah. right. you know yeah. so you know that, that's a great example of uh, a, a good fishery over there yes you know, but it's interesting because you know montauk is what also used to be with strippers as well sometimes you know kind of in the fall yeah. yeah you know they're not getting the same run they used to they get that summer fishery I do have to say, the bluefish in Montauk last year was crazy. <laughs> like, like um, beginning of the summer, right. you couldn't get past them to the striped bass. All right. There was so many thousands upon thousands of bluefish. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's interesting because two or three years ago, the bluefish kind of like disappeared a little bit. They did. Yeah. They really disappeared. Yes. Yeah. But the past year, they showed up again. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if it's a cycle, but they showed up like in the numbers that they did, like unbelievable. Yeah. My yeah. talk was unbelievable. The sound was great. The South Shore awesome. had a ton. Yes. Awesome. And it, bluefish, in my opinion, are more, are very important for the industry. Yeah. You know, because it, it, they fight like anything. Yeah. yeah, they do. They break tackle, which is yes. great for, you know, yeah. for sales and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, they're fun. They jump, you know. Uh, I mean, you can't, uh, pound for pound, they do be the striped bass. Yes. yes. Definitely. Fighting. I mean, yeah, imagine fighting 50 pound yeah. bluefish. Yeah. Right. Forget you, know, it. you catch a 15 pounder and you think you got the fight oh, on the yeah. 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 And the big ones too. It's not just yeah. the bluefish. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of times where you'll get the cocktail blues all day, and then you know you'll you'll chase down a blitz, and it's nothing but cocktail blues. But this year there was big ones. You know, 15 yeah. pounders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except for the WICC, then they don't go away. <laughs> yeah. Well, the one I think they had a couple this year, but I think that was a little some fishy happened. Yeah, there. no, we went out for that trip. It was like stellar all week, and then yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. What yeah. happens? It's tournament. Okay. It's typically what happens. The tournament shows yes. up, and they all yep. go like, hi, yeah. Sony was ringing the bell. Are you yeah. guys got to go away now? Yeah, wild, like wild. You know, but it is good to see that the bluefish oh, made yeah. a, a return to our local oh, waters. Yes. You know, it really. I, I, I have noticed from being in my, my involved with the magazine and before that when I used to work in the tackle shop, bluefish is what kind of sparks it. Yeah. And it's funny because yeah. you love bluefish and then as soon as the striped, like it's weird because like the striped bass show up and you're like, you, if you're catching bluefish when like, you're trying to open striped bass, yeah. you're like, oh, this stupid bluefish. <laughs> it's never like, yeah. like oh, cool, like a bluefish. Right, right. If, you're, if you have like striped bass on the mind yeah. and you catch a bluefish, you're mad. You're not mad. Yeah, I mean, right. you know, you're, you're frustrated. Happy. Yeah. You're frustrated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you're going with bluefish and you're smoking them and you're catching these, you know, big fish, yeah. you're like, oh, this is so much fun, you know. Right. I guess it's all about like the way you go into the trip, your mindset. Yeah. yeah you lose a nice plug at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one time, I had a quick story. I had a family in from town, and um, you know, they weren't, you know, they were just, you know, regular fishermen. You know, they weren't really, you know, they didn't go blue fish like that, like blue fish from Florida. Um, and I had a whole family out there. We were soap casting, and there was like this unbelievable bluefish bite. And I had like two plug bags filled to the brim with like plugs. Yeah. And by the end of the trip, I had like two plugs. Oh yeah, wow! Awesome. They like they went through like they're like oh, and they were having such a good time. I was just like, all right, here's yeah. another one. I tied them yeah. up again. Right. But they were just getting ripped apart. I think you know two or three bluefish were ripping the plugs oh, off. Oh yes. I was like, I was like, I had like 20 <laughs> plugs. I now I got like yeah. two. What happened on Well, it's a good option too, you know, because it's like. You could be middle of the day. I had a few charters this year where, you know, in one case, you know, the porgy fishing started off real good and then it kind of died down. And I was like, you know, everybody's having a blast, but I, I'm looking at these bluefish going off. And I said, you know what, let's get, I said to my mates, let's get these guys some diamond jigs. And next thing yeah. you know, just, you know, fill yeah. in the deck. And these people didn't want to eat them. So they were, you know, oh, which I have great. to say, bluefish yeah, yeah, is good. prepared properly is oh, right. a good table fish. Yeah. yeah. But you know, you, if you do bleed them, yeah, um, you yeah, the size of the cocktails are great eating. Oh yes, yep. you know yes. Um, if you smoke them, the big ones. Yeah, I, I I tell anybody smoke hands down, smoke bluefish it's beats a lot of things. Uh, yeah, you know. Yeah, unbelievable. One thing I like too, I do like a blackened recipe. Throw it on the grill, cooks off a lot of the oil, but I do oh, like yeah. a nice blackened season. Yeah, just throw it on the grill, and it, it's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there is ways to keep yeah. the cat, you know, keep a make the to cook these fish that typically are regarded as a. Uh, not a good table. Exactly. Thing. There's always ways to do it. Yeah. Right? You, you know. can cook in ways it's not great, and I feel like once people have that, it's no, it's not good. But yeah. you gotta do. I mean, well, anything fried is good too. So that's true. Also, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is also yeah, true. I think a lot of people forget is the bleeding part. Like yes, you said. yes. And once you bleed it, ice it. That's an important part. Keep the quality of yes. the fish. Yes. Yeah. I, I even talk about like um, there's people who like eat um, 
like try full salvage yeah you know and i'm yeah. like i'm like oh like okay <laughs> that's it you know, but they, and like, you know, they have the reputation that it just tastes like sand or like cat food. Right. But I've spoken to guys, they said if you bleed them and you ice these fish, yes. they they taste pretty good. Yes. I've heard that. I never tried, I, I never tried it either. Yeah. If you guys want to try it for yeah, me, I'm open you know. to it. I'll yeah. try anything. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know. Yeah. Speaking of false albacore, do you guys get any of the Western South? Oh my God. So. Yeah. <laughs> when you brought that up. So we usually get a run of Benita, and, which is awesome. Spanish Macs haven't really made their way over there that I know of in the last few years. Uh, the Benita, you have to be ready for them because they will pop up, and if you don't have a rod ready to throw, you know, we usually get a few every year. Um, this year, I didn't get to target them much. I went out one day, they were jumping all around. They wouldn't, they wouldn't bite. I dropped one, um, but they were everywhere. The albacore were in the Western Sound this year, like a lot, often, which was... Not, they don't usually show up in, in an abundance. They They're, typically stop around um, like Mid Island. They don't. Oh, they were here for weeks, going yeah, off, yeah. and then you had people chase them. They, they were a tricky bite, but yeah. they were here, which was, you know, every time I see something good happen, you think right. it's going to be even better next year, and we don't know yet. But you know, this year, hopefully, in the fall, they come. But they, they were here, and it was cool to see. Yeah, I sure do hope so for you guys. That's, yeah, they're, yeah, they're fun. It, you know, oh, I usually, you know, make my way to find them because that's something. Well, you got the fly rod thing going on. The yeah, white tank, yeah, the four yeah, pack. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's quite yeah. fun with that. Yeah, oh, it's, uh, especially, you know, yeah. hitting some out east spots in the years past is where I even get my false albacore. Yeah. But this year, yeah. seeing the home waters was awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. You have to go too far for them. Yeah. 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 I hope they come back. That would be cool. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about, before we wrap it up, I wanted to talk about um, species, southern species showing up in our waters. Mm -hmm. Con, we'll go to you first. Um, what, have you seen it in Cobia, anything like that? Sheep said, yeah, you know, not sheep. Sheep said they're typically here historically, but right. they seem to be showing up again, you know, in recent years, making a little bit of a comeback. Right. But the Cobia bite, yeah. did you get in on that Cobia bite at all? No, I mean, I know somebody else who does, and he's on the South Shore. Yeah. And he, for some reason, know where they are and always getting him. His name is Joey. Yeah. Bludgeo? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Joey, man. I know Joey. <laughs> we talk, right. I talk about a trip with him going with him. Exactly. Yeah. Like, where the heck you find him? We're trying to look for him. We can never find him. Like, it was I can't find him. Like, oh, forget it. So I've been hearing about the Cobia, and it's really cool that they're showing up. You know, I, I guess. I don't know, maybe it's that cool because it may be a sign of things changing. Yes. Which, you know, yeah. in the big picture it might not be. But at the same time, it is good to see that we're getting another species of fish coming in. Yeah. That's right. really yeah. fun to target. Yes. And they're big. Yes. yes. They are you know, big. 60 pounds, 50 pounds, Cobia. Yeah. yeah. You know, you know that, that's a lot of fun. Oh, you can't do that. Yeah. But it's interesting because where I am, I'm like Central Island. I'm like, um, I'm in the Patrick area, religious area. I fish right. out of. Okay. It doesn't seem like they go past the past like Gilgo. Mm, like yeah. they kind of stand yeah. on west end of the island. Yeah, we yeah. get a yeah. few like that show up in Shinnecock and Montauk once in a while, but the main bite of Cobia is in like Rockaway, Breezy, right. yeah. Jones. You know, uh, the, like um, was like bite to get to Gilgo. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's it. But they don't go further now, really. But the main bite that stays over there. Um, it's weird, like it's, I don't know, it's the current patterns or like all that bunkers over there. I don't know what it is, you know, but there, there seems to be a really good Kobe bite over there. And I have heard the ways to get them, fishing around the, the sea buoys, mm -hmm. uh, the bunker pods, of course. Of course, yes. And I heard, I don't know if it, it's probably frowned upon, but some of the guys are fishing the shadow lines underneath the tankers coming into New York Harbor. Interesting. Casting oh, yeah. bunk tails. Interesting. I don't know, that's probably kind of frowned upon. It might be a little bit like, you know, a big no-no. But I did hear some guys are casting bucktails underneath the ta the shadow lines of the tankers right, wow. coming into the harbor That's and catching Kobe. Uh, so I might have, I might have. <laughs> but, you, know, you gotta watch the podcast too. Uh, yeah, you gotta watch yeah. this video to see yes. to hear that yeah. secret. So but I did hear that that there, there are some Kobe at, you know, those kind of Very spots. Yeah. You know. You know, casting eels too is a Kobe you know, it's another Kobe thing. They cast a lot of eels. Um, bombers, I believe Black Bombers was another Cobia thing. Mm -hmm. um, interesting stuff, but yep. I want to put the question on you. Have you been seeing anything interesting in your waters in the North Shore? You know, so, I mean, a couple of things, yes. Um, you know, I, I did notice high water temps this year. Okay. I forgot the number, but it was, it was higher than I anticipated. Um, we did get, I wasn't on the trip at the kids' camp. They caught... Even a blue runner or something like okay. that. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. on my Instagram if you take a look. We just posted like yeah. a full cool, cool yeah. camp uh, catch. But um, we had a lot of dolphins this year that were, you know, which we don't usually have. Okay. You'll get like a pot or so. Yeah. But we had 
we were on a trip, there was hundreds of dolphins. Wow. And it was just oh, wild. Yeah. yeah. It's like, what happened to the porky bite? And the next thing you know, there's dolphins come out. We actually, yeah, that's about right. I, I yeah. didn't quite see it as good as one of the other guys came up with a fluke in his mouth, which I didn't, you know. Oh. But we're on this, we were on a charter, and the next thing you know, I'm hand passing around my binoculars, we're all watching them, and it was, sure. they were around for a little bit of time. They, yeah. went, they actually went under the Throg's Neck White Stone into like New York Harbor. Any other uh, sharks have you guys thought you were seeing? No, regular dogfish. Yeah. And I, I think we're seeing more of them. And then there's like browns or um not that we've caught, but you know, definitely more of yeah. the dogfish, so yeah, yeah. So, okay. You know. Things are changing. But I think hey, you know what leaves something else comes and yeah. you know, things are always changing. So it's, yeah, yeah. as long as it's not a total negative. Soon it might be a uh, targeting red fish. <laughs> <laughs> is there a tarpon caught in Montauk or something? There was a tarpon what? caught in Montauk. No um, way. That's that's kinda wild. Uh there was tarpon caught in Montauk, there was some tarpon in Jersey. There was at, I I remember a couple years back there was a story because the fishermen um Chip Hutch here but down in Jersey where there was a diver. And he goes, there's tarpon down there. They're going, yeah, go kick it out of here. <laughs> and he goes, no, really. And, and, they go, and he said there's a whole school then. Wow. You know, and he goes, all right, I'm going to shoot one and show you guys. Because there's no regs on. Right, right. Yeah, Jersey. Right. Exactly. I guess it was frowned upon because the guy shot it with his spit. But he's like, no, I'll, I'll eat it. Like, he, like, you know, he, uh, he ate it, I guess. Well, you got to prove it. If you don't catch it, it doesn't happen. He's right? like, I'm going right. to prove yeah, you guys yeah. wrong. And he sh this kid you know, shot this tarpon with his spear gun. Wow. And then he legit came up with like a 70, 80 pound tarpon. Wow. So, I mean, you know. How south was that? Um, I don't know exactly. exactly. Like I could pull Jersey, nonetheless. Yeah, it was Jersey. Yeah. It was Jersey. Wow. Which is, you know, it's still, yeah. it's right. only a, a stone throw like where we are. Yes. You know, and there was a, there was a run of tarpon in Peconic Bay. Get out. Some years, wow. like, you know, 10, 12, 15 years ago. Wow. Right, right. There was a run of tarpon in Peconic Bay where you could actually go, guys were going yeah. out there and targeting tarpon. Wow. wow. They were that uh, is... I don't know what they were doing, but they wow. were, there was a couple caught in the um, the fish traps. Yeah. The, the, uh, the fish nets. Mm -hmm. Like in like, that Peconic Bay, Shinnecock area. Yes. Yes. They would get a couple tarpon in there. Um, another interesting one was Kubera Snapper. There was Kubera Snapper they were catching in the nets in Montauk. Wow. I heard there was also Cabrera Snapper in some of the bridges out east on the pilots. Oh, they were wow. diving and never seen Cabrera Snapper. Wow. There was a couple of Cabrera Snapper washed up on the beaches in Montauk. Interesting. So, yeah. you know, I mean, yeah. a couple of redfish I heard about that were caught too. I, I heard something about years. that, I don't know where. Yeah. You know, yeah. I also, there was a tarpon caught. Oh, there was a tarpon caught in, in uh, New England. Mm. Last year. Oh, wow. A guy caught a tarpon in New England last year. That's pretty far north. Yeah, yeah. so, you know, I mean, about an I don't know, maybe. Somewhere we shouldn't have been. Just yeah. <laughs> things are changing. Things are changing. The cats are yes. confirmed. Top in New England last year. That is wild. So, wow. you know, I mean, maybe we might start seeing the top in the heat of summer. Oh, boy. I can get used to that. I, mean, I would be yeah, yeah, pretty interested. There are yeah. a couple of fish, too. It would add a whole other element to Long Island fishing. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. it would be kind of interesting. But um, that's good stuff, guys. Um, really cool talking, guys. And, um, you know, Kenny, I mean, you guys, if you want to check out a program, if you have kids that are involved with fishing, the Angler Fleet, tell us again about your program with the kids in fishing. So, yeah, we have a summer camp all summer long. Uh, the months that, or the weeks that the school's not in session, they go Monday through Friday, 9 to 3, every day. We have a 15-spot limit on the boat that does the kids camp, and some days when I get a demand, if there's like a group of five or ten, we'll take the bigger boat and kind of get that going. Um, you know, the more demand, the more I'll expand with it, but kids love it. Kids absolutely love it. Careful, they might not want to go to the other camp. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, and that's might, awesome. And they might become yeah. full-time fishermen. Yes, yes, and besides that, you guys have the four pack, four charter. Yes, yeah, so we have a, we have a one boat, we'll take four guys. We'll have another boat, we take six guys. And then we have the, the 46 foot, we'll fish, you know, 12, sometimes 15 if it's kids. And then uh, we have a, a regular party boat that fishes up to 16. So options for everybody. Options for everybody, we do awesome. it all. We awesome. do it all. Fly, light, tackle, bait fish, whatever it is. Guys, guys, check out Captain Kenny, very knowledgeable guy. Uh, Captain Khan, you're gonna be on. I know you're gonna be out there this year doing more video. I got yes. him on my boat. You got him. You got him on his boat yeah. because yes. you know he's gonna be doing that video for you. You can yeah. and the kids trip. That'd be great. Yeah. You can document that. Yeah. Get that out there. Just show them what it's all about. The smiles, the laughs for the kids. You know those memories. And you can document. Yeah, capture. Yeah, that's yes. very good. Cool. No, but I know yeah. you're gonna be out there this year doing a lot of videos, capturing again. Am I correct? Yes. Uh, uh, what's your YouTube channel? What's your uh, Instagram? Just so everybody knows. So very simple. Uh, it's just at King Con K O N Adventure. All okay. one word. That way you can find me really easily. Because the gorilla, when you search in YouTube, he oh. comes right ahead of me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta compete with the guy. Now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's funny, man. Yeah. But uh, both these guys, very knowledgeable guys. They fishy dudes, they fish the island, they know a lot of stuff, you know, 
feel free to reach out to them. You know, if you're interested in a charter trip or if you're interested in a uh, cotton coming out and fishing, when you're documenting the trip. Yeah, you know, cool. there's some exactly. cool stuff. Check these guys out. It's a pleasure talking to these guys. Thank you. Guys, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yep. Yes. Have a, a good evening. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.